Slammiversary has come and gone. I will say the 15th anniversary will not be one of those shows you'll just immediately forget. There will be at least a few things in there that you will like. But I'm not going to lie, this show had a lot of flaws on it. Let's talk about the first thing. No replays. Everything you saw there was just a one-time take. Now, that's a double-edged sword. It actually makes it different from the WWE. Honestly, it is different. But then, if you want to try and remember that moment, you can't. Because you can't see it again. Not unless you do some highlights during Impact. You won't see anything other than that. Now, Don West and I believe the guy's name, Alberto Flores, they weren't a very good team together. I've never heard Don West, and I have heard snippets of him, but I never heard him as commentator when I began to watch in 2010. So, technically, I don't know what it was like for me, for, for anyone else other than me, saying that he was okay. I don't think he was the best commentator I ever had, but he seemed to be alright. But Roberto Flores, I don't know. It just didn't feel like they meshed very well. And that kind of fell into the show because the first, well, before I get to the first match, let's just talk about the pre-show match. And that's a six-person tag with Sutter, Ali, and Shira versus KM, Kong, and Laura Van Ness. Here's the problem for me. This wasn't about Ali. And that's the problem. It's not about Sutter. It's not about Laura Van Ness. It's not about KM. It's not about Shira. It's not about Congo Kong. It should be about Ali. But it's not. It's about all of them. So that just didn't work for me. And even though the good guys won, I just felt like, you know, it, it didn't matter. Because Ali should be the focus of the show. Should be the focus of that match. Ali has been basically dropped by Impact Wrestling. Cherry Bomb, who came in to become Ali and who became so beloved by the Impact crowd, has now become a nobody. And that pisses me off. She's probably been on my shoulder, the one with her and the title. I just, I, it, that's just a beautiful shot of her and I just wanted it. Period. Now the first match of the night. A fatal four-way for the, what it, would you call it the unified tag belts? From LAX, that's the Global Force Wrestling and Impact Wrestling. Why are they still holding two titles? I, this was the thing that made no freaking sense throughout the night. With the three major titles that had to be the, well, the three major matches that had two sets of titles. When it came to the Fatal 4-Way, and here's a problem. Members of NOAA were there. Members of Crash were there. Members of AAA were there. And I only knew the people from Crash only because they're the ones who've been shown. And that is the Kid and Junior Connection, as I called them. Because I couldn't remember Garza Jr. And I couldn't remember Galato Kid, so I just called them Kid and Junior Connection. They actually sound pretty good. But here's the problem. I can't remember the name from the people from AAA. I can't remember the people from, from NOAA. And I... And I, it was a huge spot fest. Now, there's nothing wrong with having a Lucha Libre match. That is how they do it in Mexico. And they announced it ahead of time. This is a Lucha style match. A very high pace, high octane match. But here's the problem. Because they didn't sponsor anybody from NOAA. They didn't sponsor or give promos for the people from Crash. And they didn't sponsor give promoters or let them come over beforehand when it came to triple a i didn't know who to root for i didn't know who to boo who was the heel who were the faces i knew about the guys from crash they're good guys and then the guys from lax they were the bad guys to a certain extent i think i mean you could easily say they're bad guys but the way they've been talking it sounds like they're good guys of course, they did say that little line after the match was over when they won, saying that we're about to get a new member, probably Alberto El Patrion. 
But the problem is, I didn't know about the other two if I didn't want to root for them or cheer for them. Or boo them or hate them. The person that I was rooting for the most was uh, the LAX's girl, uh, Delamonte. She was all over the place. She was basically throwing herself at every guy and knocking them down. Doing kicks, doing flips, and messing with them. She was the only person I rooted for the most. Diamante was the one that I wanted to see more of. And I don't know why she's not in the knockouts division. She's just working with LAX, which doesn't make any sense. She has talent. Even though she has a super big chin, it makes no difference. She's got talent. But that's it. And I don't know how to feel about that match. It was just a big mess. Now, here's a match that I was surprised about. And that was Moose and D'Angelo Williams versus Eli Drake and Chris Adonis. Now, I didn't think there was going to be anything really good with this. Since we don't know if D'Angelo Williams is going to stay or not, we don't really know what to feel, most people. He probably is never going to come back. Or maybe because of his performance might, being good, might be good, which it was. Maybe he will stay. Now, I didn't know how to feel at that time until I saw the match. And I saw D'Angelo Williams, the shining star the entire thing. The guy acts like an X Division star. Now, I don't know how many months or it hasn't been a year since he's been training. It could be a couple of months since he's been training. I guess maybe that little bit of training has helped. But it does show that he is green. But even with that greenness, he has talent as an X Division star. He does. He does need time to develop though. So I would rather have him go to their developmental first before he comes back again. But damn, the guy was pretty damn good. And by the end of the match, he does a splash on Chris Adonis. And then Moose power bombs Eli Drake. But what does it really give us in the end? Next, this coming week, I don't really see anything substantial for the grand champion. I just don't because he's not really doing anything. It could be a great spot for D'Angelo Williams because maybe he will stay and maybe train and then he will go on the roster. But as it stands, it really doesn't give us anything. I'd rather have seen Eli Drake have the title. Hell, it would have been better to have the title for this next match. A mixed full metal mayhem match. Angela Love and Richard, Davy Richards, versus Eddie Edwards and Alyssa Edwards. Here's the problem. The Full Metal Mayhem match was good. I'm not saying it wasn't. It was good. It was damn good to see both sexes in there. The only problem is they weren't going to interact. This isn't like one of the other Indies promotions where they're willing to let the women get powerbombed by the men badly hard. They only let women face women and men face men. But it was still a decently good match. At, at, at least in the respects that when it was time for Angela Love to do a spot, she knew exactly how to do it, unlike Alyssa. Alyssa was the weakest chain in that entire situation. But as it came down to it, Angelina Love was able to cover for her and help her husband, in real life as we know, to do what needed to be done for Eddie Edwards. But here's the problem, and it was Eddie Edwards and Alyssa who won, which I felt like they shouldn't need to win. The problem here is this. They should be only about Davey Richards, only about Eddie Edwards, and it should be for the Impact Grand Championships. Let's be honest. This has been a good feud, but there's been no real substance to it. Yeah, you got a good story to it, but nothing that would give a good payout. Unless it was maybe one of them was going to leave, like Eddie Edwards and his wife, or Davey Richards and his wife, or there was a title at stake. So the problem for me was, this was a damn good match, and they have had a good story. But the problem is, it's not enough. They needed a title or a consequence. And this isn't a consequence, and it's not a title. They said this ends now. It's not going to end. We're probably going to see this going on in the next impact. And that just made it bad. Now, Storm versus EC3, not E-Sing 3. I thought he wasn't going to continue it. It would have been funny if he had. 
And the slap, and this, and the slap, this, the strap match, same slap. <laughs> Look, I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't sure what was gonna happen here. I know they both can do a great Cummings. But the way things have been sponsored for weeks, it's hard to say once this match happened, if it was going to be shit or if it was going to hit. Now, I will say it was a great match. I did enjoy it. It really worked very well. Seeing EC3 getting handcuffed at one point and getting his ass, well, basically he got his back whipped. Not great, but good. In the end, he gets released. And something happens, for what I understand, to James Storm. The problem was that as I was watching the stream, I lost the connection. So I didn't see Storm collapse and hit the floor, and then EC3 gets the advantage. Now, I don't know if that was a real collapse because he really got hurt, or there was something really wrong, or a fake one. The only thing I know is after the fact, when I was able to see the rest of the stream, EC3 managed to win, and pretty much... That was it. And then we saw Storm afterward basically really messed up. I'm not exactly sure if it's a fake or if it's real, if it's a work or a shoot. I just wish I could have been able to see it. Of course, after I do this video, I can wait until they finally upload it to a website and I can see it for myself to see if it actually was a real fake or if it was a work. But anyway, as it stands, EC3 wins. It was a good match, but because I couldn't see all of it, it's kind of hard to say if it was a good ending. Now, I'm going to get this over with right now. Josh Matthews and Josh Matthews and Big Papa Pump versus JB and Joseph Park, The Abyss, Shark Boy, and what was the guy's name? Um, Father. Um, Matthew, or Michaels, or Matthew, whatever. Mitchell, sorry, Father Mitchell. I think that might have been the person who brought Abyss in originally. I, like I said, I only started watching Impact Wrestling around 2010. So I never did see how Abyss was brought in. If it was because of Father Mitchell, if that's his name, then actually bringing him back was actually kind of cool. My question is, will he continue that's what I'm hoping for. If he's the original person that brought him in, he actually needs him because the Abyss has always been very unbalanced for quite a while now, and he needs a reboot. So bringing Mitchell in might actually be a wise thing. How was the match? It was surprising to see Josh Matthews still had some skills and was capable enough to actually wrestle in the ring. From what I understand about Josh, he did wrestle for a while, but he was never the best wrestler there. And for what I understand, he did actually get his ass kicked a somewhat a good amount of time before they finally took him off television and put him on the commentary and interviews. So, seeing that at least he kept himself in good shape, that he was capable of doing something, was actually a nice breath of fresh air. I know a lot of people saying, who gives a fuck? This was still Michael Cole and... The King Jerry Lawler all over again. Dude, relax. As I've always said, when you care so much about how the technical side of wrestling is, you lose the mystique of it. I don't like to know absolutely everything about wrestling. I'm not saying I don't focus on it sometimes, but I try not to focus on it as much as possible, if that makes any sense. I try to make sure that I... Balance it out. I know this is like JB. Uh, Calm down. <laughs> Look, is it a bite off of them? Of course it is. Is it similar to what happened with Jack Swagger and the opponent he had? I don't remember Jack, who was up against Jack Swagger. And that was with uh, Michael Cole. You'll probably tell me, but I don't remember who it was. But the point, it doesn't matter. This was on impact. It was different. It was different commentators. And you could take it for what it is. It was a little different. They tried to switch it up. Halfway through the match, they cut to the back, pre-recorded, and you got Shark Boy in the tank. Then you have JB doing a, a flip into the tank. Shark Boy biting the butt of, of Josh Matthews. Then you got Father Mitchell giving the mask back to the Abyss. If he is the one who originated with the Abyss to bring him in. 
And then the Abyss comes out and they kick ass. And in the end, Josh Matthews took some tax, which that does take a little bit of courage. Not everyone is prepared to take tax. Then you got JB doing it. He does a splash and takes tax to the wrist and the hands. That's not good at that height. That will penetrate your veins if you're not careful. It will make you bleed. So I will say this. Was it a great match? No. Was it a good match? And with a little bit of comedic attitude in it? Yes. I will take it for what it is. It was a slash between trying to make you laugh and trying to make it interesting. Take it for what it was. Now, the... I'm going to do it now. The Knockouts title match. I'll say this. It was good to see that they made this what made this important. Because it was the last, before the last match of the night. But let's be honest here. What was that? You got Gail Kim coming out with no title. They said they're going to unify the titles. The first of the two unifying title matches. But when you look at both matches, the ending match and this one, there were no new titles. Why did you bring out Gail Kim? For what? It made no sense to bring out Gail Kim without a new title that's supposed to retire the GFW Women's title and the Impact Grand I'm about Impact Grand Champ, the Impact Knockouts title. They need to retire them and have a new title. Why didn't they have one available? This made no sense to have her there. Then KM came out. Then Laura Van Ness came out, which was a somewhat okay distraction. But then when Sienna sent them into the back, the real match began. And I felt it was a very good woman's match. And at the end, what did we get? Sienna blocks the mist coming from Rosemary's mouth, burns her hands, and then rubs it into her face. And in the end, she wins that way. She cheats. But here's the problem. Gail Kim was there. For what? So she get a few moments and a couple of dollars? That didn't help the match. If this was like reality of wrestling, when I was still doing reviews of reality of wrestling, I haven't done it in a while, when Booger T had called in Rey Mysterio to bring out a new Reality of Wrestling title. That was important. He came out for a reason. Gail Kim came out for nothing. Zero. Zip. Nothing. It was a joke. Just to bring out Gail Kim so when the time comes, she could come back and then take the title from Sienna. I just felt that was a waste of time. That angered me. There was no payout for Sienna because there was no new title. There was no payout for Rosemary because actually the crowd really wanted Rosemary to win and I think it would have been better for Rosemary to win. And the crowd didn't get what they wanted even though they did boo Rose, boo, not Rosemary, Sienna. But then Sienna didn't have anything to really gain. It just didn't feel like anything. Now here's the final match of the night. Now if I'm forgetting anything, yes I am forgetting. Not the final match of the night. The two out of three free fall. The three matches that was for the X Division title. Sanjay Duff versus Loki. It was the best match of the night. Because it was the best story of the night. Now I know a lot of people, and I'm sure the Sled Daddy's going to say this. That wasn't the greatest match of the night because it was nothing but a damn spot fest. I'm seeing it for a little more than that. You got Sanjay Duff who never won a freaking title in that company where he was passed over multiple times. I'm sure it was because of Jeff Jarrett. I'm sure it was because of maybe um, Eric Bischoff. I'm sure because of Hulk Hogan. It makes no difference who it was. Even probably Dixie Carter wasn't willing to give it to him because she didn't like him. Or she thought he didn't have anything. Sanjay Duff should have had a title many years ago. He should have had a storyline many years ago. He never did. They just brought him in to wrestle and then dropped him. So in this respect, it was a real story. This guy had been around since nearly the very beginning of the company. 
not the very beginning, but near the very beginning of the company, and has never gained a title. Then you got Loki, who has been at the very beginning of the company, who was in the very first match of the company with AJ Styles. One of the first matches with AJ Styles, as far as I know. And he is the epitome of what this company had given the, comp the, given the crowd, given the company, given wrestling. So that was a very compelling match. These guys know each other. So they know how to deal with one another. And in the end, it was a very good two out of three falls, three falls match. I keep pronouncing three wrong. Anyway, in the end, Sanjay Duff retains, which I believe was the wisest thing to do. Sanjay needed to retain. Now here's the problem. Now that Sanjay had retained at the signature pay-per-view next to Bound for Glory, what are they going to do with him? If they don't do something with him, it's stupid. Because then they went to Mumbai, India, let him win it, let him win at Slammiversary, and then literally do nothing with him. Because people do want to see him be treated properly. It's not the point if he's great or not. You put the title on the guy, push him and see what happens. If he sucks, then you can drop it. If he succeeds, then you let him continue running with it. But if you do nothing with him before you even know if he can even do anything, then you're stupid. Now, here's the final match of the night. Oh, almost forgot. Jeff Jarrett came out. Now, I'm hoping the Slug Daddy does presume Jeff Jarrett position. Because the guy did come out. He had a short talk thanking the crowd, which it's just eh. But in the end, it was all right to see Jeff Jarrett. He was the one who started both companies. You, you can take it for what it is. Now, lastly versus... Alberto Patreon or Alberto the Boss. They just said his name at the end of the show. Would have been better if they said it at the very beginning. Anyway, they did a lot of vid packages for this, like they did for most of the matches throughout the night. And I will say this, the vid video packages throughout the night, like for Eddie Edwards and Davey Richards, like for um, Storm and EC3, like for Rosemary, and for this, was well, well done. It's just they didn't have any build. Now this was the most best build they could come up with. Next to what happened with Storm and EC3. Was it a good match? It was pretty good. It wasn't the best match tonight, but it was pretty good. Seeing Alberto's dad there in the mass along with his brother was cool. The person that didn't need to be there was King Mo. They could have put someone else there. And King Mo acted like he didn't know what the fuck to do with himself. King Mo. The guy is an MMA fighter. The guy has been in UFC. The guy has been around and he acts like he doesn't know what the fuck to do. D'Angelo Williams had more understanding what to do in the ring than King Mo did. And it can't be because he hasn't been there in a while. It's just he acts like an idiot. I just... <sighs> you would expect King Mo to at least know what to do. To mess with Alberto outside the ring. And then it would make it more apparent when his father interacts with him. It would be better. But he acted so timid and like he didn't understand what the hell to do. He was supposed to be on the freaking monster at the roster at one point. So anyway, in the end, Alberto wins the, the, the match and wins both titles. The question is, what's going to happen this Thursday? Will he join LAX or not? Because LAX did drop the hint that he probably is going to join them. I don't know. But I will say this about Slammiversary 15. It's not something you'll forget immediately. There were some things in there that was memorable. Like the full Metal Mayhem match. Which, if I remember correctly, wasn't this supposed to be in a steel cage? Isn't the full Metal Mayhem match supposed to technically be in a steel cage? I could be wrong. I can't remember. Maybe it's a lockdown match. I don't remember. But you guys tell me below if I'm wrong that there should have been a steel cage for the Richards and Eddie match. Anyway, I just feel like this is not that bad of a show. You could do a review of it because there was a lot going on. Hard to keep track of everything. At least see it one more time to really soak it all in. That's just how I feel about it. That's what I'm going to do when it's available to see. I'm going to look at it at least one more time to truly get all that you that I could get from the entire pay-per-view. Because there was a lot going on in certain matches. And this is just my point of view of it. 
You guys have a good day, have a good night, and watch for my Raw Review Mini Monday. If I'm going to see it. I haven't been myself lately. Have a good day. Have a good night. Peace.